I'm very excited to be here today to share this experience with you as I take a look at some of the most expensive gemstones in the world. And not just that, some of these stones are not even available to be seen by the public. So you and I get an exclusive look. So join me on Out and About as I go gemstone shopping. Now is Mr. Rohan Pereira, who is Director of Marketing and Exports of the National Gem and Jewelry Association here in Sri Lanka. Hi, uh, good day to you. Hello, Sasha. It's a, pleasure. Um, it's a pleasure meeting you too. Now, here we have quite the event happening in Sri Lanka. It's happening after 26 years. It's a very big deal. Tell us about the basis of this. What is it exactly? Right. This is the uh, International Colored Gemstones Association. Actually, this is the annual sessions of the International Colored Gemstones Association. Sri Lanka being, a, being the premier great country that produces the best colored gemstones, this event is the most important and the most significant for this nation. This comes to Sri Lanka after 26 years, as the last time that was here, that it came here was 26 years ago. And now we have managed to once again host it in this country, despite huge competition from the neighboring nations. Uh, with the ICA Congress, that is 2015, arrives the premier grade buyers of, of people involved in the gem and jewelry industry. And when they arrive in Sri Lanka, they offer our industry a very huge impetus and opportunity to establish B2B relationships and connections which augur very well for our industry. So this is possibly the biggest thing to happen to the German jewelry industry here in Sri Lanka after decades. Absolutely, Sasha, because uh, the arrival of the ICA, which itself is equivalent to bringing the international market to our doorstep, because all these premier gate buyers would now come to Sri Lanka and experience the bewitching beauty of our gemstones at the premier grade, at the premier most colored gemstones producing nation. Actually. In honor of these uh, distinguished premier grade visitors, we have exposed, we have, we have in, in fact facilitated uh, the, the rare exposition of national treasures such as the Star of Lanka and also the Ray of Treasure which are actually priceless exhibits which would indeed give them an opportunity to see the best of Sri Lanka at the, at the best, very best time. So these two are the biggest that we have to offer here in Sri Lanka. Tell us a little bit about these two uh, precious stones we have. Really, these are the biggest known. I mean, there, there could be bigger stones than this, but these are now considered as national treasures. The Star of Lanka is 393 carats, which is a blue star sapphire. And the other one is a ray of fresh, which is a crystal burial cat's eye of 105 carats. So both these stones are actually considered national treasures and are not not usually exposed uh, at common exhibitions, but especially considering the importance of this event and importance of the distinguished guests who have come to Sri Lanka, we have now decided that it is fitting to give this uh, to facilitate this exposition. Can you put a price on these stones? Well, well uh, Sasha, thank you very much. That, that's a very tricky question because uh, you cannot really price this because this is a national treasure, and. Uh, you will, uh, it's very difficult to put a price because uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder as well as you will not get such, such a quantum of carotage together in this form. Brilliant. Um, one other thing I'd like to ask you about this entire exhibition we have and the Congress um, is that why, why is Sri Lanka at the forefront of the gemstone industry? Why is, uh, why is the blue sapphire specifically such a big deal? All right. Um, let me just initially tell you gemstones have a historical as well as a religious connection to this nation. I'm sure you would recall that Lord Buddha first visited Sri Lanka to resolve an issue or, or, or dispute between two warring brothers, Chulodara and Mahodara, who, who went into battle for a throne made of gemstones. Now what does that mean? That means that we had an industry, that the gemstone industry was prevalent in this country 3,000 years ago. So this industry is the most significant and it's the most important and it's continued over so many years, 3,000 years. I mean, I'm sure in my view, 
this is a this is an industry older than the tea industry which Sri Lanka is popular for. In fact, there were so many presentations made today saying that Sri Lankan stones were found all over the island even before Sri Lankans ever moved out at least thousands of years ago. Certain, I mean, thousand five hundred, two thousand, they found jewelry pieces with Sri Lankan stones, stones Sri Lankan origin, in numerous parts of the world. So you can see how significant this is to Sri Lanka, as the as the premier most uh, how we have become the premier most country because I could also recall Sri Lanka is called Ratnadweepa. Yeah. Ratnadweepa means Gem Island, Ibn Battuta, Marco Polo. People and Dr. Edward Goblin, they have established and they have said academically that Sri Lanka is the number one colored gemstone producing nation in the world. It sure is and we can see that here today I'm at, at ICA as well. Thank you so much for talking My to us. It, the knowledge you gave us is really is priceless. Thanks. Looking through these beautiful gemstones, I stopped by to talk to Mr. K.L.D. Dayasagar, who is the Deputy Director General of the National Gems and Jewelry Authority. Hi, how are uh, you doing today? Fine. fine. Now, uh, today, we're at, right now, we're at the uh, Rare Gemstones with Special Effects booth counter, whatever you may call it. Yes. What, what are these special effects that these gemstones have? Yeah, these are actually optical effects created by uh, material inside the gemstone. And these are very, very rare. Uh, pieces I could say. So these aren't artificially made, these are naturally, they've been in these gemstones for millions yeah. of years now. Nothing to do with man, you know, okay. it is created by nature itself and then we'll say accidental creations. Mm -hmm. But yet beautiful. Yeah. yeah, gemstone itself is a fabulous creation. In Within a gemstone you see something which is very very special. Alright, so let's see what these special effects are, if we could take a look. So tell us what's happening here. Yes, now this this uh, particular stone is called a chrysoberyl. Mm -hmm. Within this chrysoberyl, there is a uh, image which is created by another mineral, mm -hmm. which is called a uh, rutile. Mm -hmm. Right? Rutile is in very fine form, a needle-like form, mm -hmm. creates a stupa-like effect. So it looks like a chaitya. Yes, that's right. Looks like a chaitya. That is the effect. Yeah. Right? That is rare. And in our history of about 30 years uh, laboratory service, we have not seen a similar effect in a gemstone. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's very special. And if I may turn it the other way, okay. well you will see again the same material forming, mm -hmm. a bow leaf like effect. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a chaitya on one side right. and then and a bow leaf, leaf on, on the, the other. other side. Yeah. As this is the only one of this nature, it has a immense value. And if we move on to the next, now these are beautiful gemstones themselves. Just being a gemstone themselves gives them a massive value. But when you add special effects like this, we how much? Adding, we have just <laughs> no, <laughs> it, we've special identified effects. special effects. Yeah, right. Nothing is done by okay. man or nobody. Right. This is also a special stone where it is. It is a yellow sapphire in which you will see a four, a six-sided uh, blue pattern in it. Mm -hmm where the color has got arranged according to crystal axis. So we're looking, so we're looking at inside this stone, there's yes, a just, little bit of a pattern. Slightly, yeah, just slightly below the surface of the stone. It is not on top, but slightly below the surface of the stone, creating a six-sided pattern that is also special. Okay. Right? You may see six, uh, six red stars, but this is totally different to that. This is also a rare occurrence. Uh, it has 1,600 carats. This is quartz, but it shows a streak running across it. Okay. You get smaller stones, but when you see, think of the size, it's exceptionally big. And then the stone is far, far cleaner, mm -hmm. right? No impurities, no flaws in it. For, for something of this size, how much would you say the Probably price range? <laughs> These, we'll say these are priceless stones. Okay. Maybe the seller and the buyer will have a price, oh, okay. right? Okay. So, uh, so it comes value, down to a certain value. value. Buyer, uh, we'll say tables mm -hmm. and if the seller agrees to that, okay. well, there'll be a transaction. Okay.
And yeah. this beauty? Yes, this beauty has two stars on it. Normally a star is a six red uh, thing. You will see two side by side stars on the stone. So we call it a twin star. Usually it's just one star that you see yes. on these sorts yeah, of... One star or the star can have 12 rays, the same star. Okay. Six uh, prominent rays and uh, sub prominent ones again another six. But, but then this is two separate... Two separate stars, yeah. It's like twinning. Now, apart from these rare gemstones that we have here, we have a display of several other jewellery items and gems. Yes, We've given yeah. uh, local dealers an opportunity here today. Yes, Tell us about that. The and Jewellery Authority has a mandate. We are there to regulate the industry, develop the industry and promote the industry. If you look at these uh, traders here, they are coming under the category called small and medium entrepreneurs. We are giving them an opportunity. This is a great event here. What you see here, ICA Congress, International Colored Zones Associations Congress here. There are over 250 delegates from all the other countries. These delegates are the cream or the supermost uh, traders of the world. They belong to 40 country, 47 countries. They are out of 47 countries, 250 here. Their membership is about 600. Right? So we have given the opportunity to these uh, small and medium entrepreneurs to interact with them, to see their requirements, for them to see the products they have created. Right? So I, either party get, understands the other. This is what you require in trading. Right? And then we expect a great boom within the next five years. Once so, so the effects aren't start, immediate. Yeah, once these links start, uh, what do you call, materializing. Yeah, there'll be opportunity in gem cutting segment, there'll be opportunity in heat treatment, there'll be opportunity in jewelry manufacturing, practically, uh, throughout the industry. All right, thank you so much. I'm at the entrance of the ICA Congress right now and I caught up with Maha al -Sibai. I hope I pronounced her name right, from Syria, who's based in Dubai, is that right? Yes, that's right, thank right. you. And Maha, you have your own brand itself, could, I, could you tell us about your brand to start off with? Okay, my brand is uh, seven years uh, old and um, uh, I am based in Dubai. Basically my brand uh, image is the artistic jewelry. I take on the uh, natural stones, absolutely natural and natural metals as well. So uh, I concentrate on the artistic area where we form it in an art artistic way. Okay. So basically you are here at the ICA Congress to find out about the suppliers we have here and to get a general education about this entire industry, yeah? That's right. Actually, it was very educational and um, I, I, this is my first time here in uh, Sri Lanka. It is amazing to be in touch with the original place of sapphires. For someone who is in the industry who has been dealing with these stones for a while, do you have a preferred stone you like to play around with? I fall in love with Padparacha. Uh, this the is, yes, stone. Okay. Yes, this is the uh, new discovered uh, a range of uh, sapphire. Mm -hmm. It is orange color and uh, I really fall in love with it. So in this uh, conference there was uh, quite concentration about educating uh, about this particular stone. And uh, knowing more about it is really interesting. So I think this is uh, so inspiring at this moment. So you can expect a lot of uh, Padmaraja stones and possibly in your near future um, jewelry as well. Certainly. Um, here's a question. For someone who deals directly with the client, uh, for someone who deals with the person that these stones end up with, have you noticed that maybe some people have a preference of stones or types of stones or colors depending on their personality? Certainly. We have two types of clients. Um, uh, first client is the, the, the client who looks at jewelry in terms of fashion and beauty. So mostly this type of uh, clients, they, they really don't understand what they're buying. They just like the look and that's it. The other part, they, they, they know what they're buying and they are collective. So they, they really fall in love with the piece and they try to understand what is the stone, what is behind it, what is the romantic story about it, uh, where it was discovered. And that type of clients really Im impresses me and I really wish and always work on uh, educating my clients more about where did it come from, how was it made and um, uh, all the circumstances around it. Yeah. 
So you get a feel of why the stone is as precious as it is, yeah? Exactly. If I were to, say, say if I wanted to come to this event, it was a very high profile event and I wanted to uh, decorate myself with a stone, with a necklace, uh, would you be able to recommend something for me, depending on my personality or, or maybe colors I'd like? What would you recommend for me right now? Uh, right now, as I told you, I'm so inspired with the uh, red range of color, although sapphire is known mostly like a blue mm -hmm. or royal blue. But we discovered uh, recently many ranges uh, of colors, starting from the blue, going going through red, orange, and yellow. And I think at this particular time, and uh, and the look that you, uh, I would love to uh, recommend for you is all the red, uh, all, all the ranges of red color and and orange. All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to us, Maha, and it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you. When it comes to this Aika in particular, we've made quite the event of it with facets happening alongside it and yet another exhibition. Tell us about how this came into being. What we wanted to do is we didn't just want to give them a conference. We wanted to give them something out of the blues. We wanted to make the, one of the best ever conferences this association members attended. So we have given them a gem show uh, of the facets. Now facets by itself is 25 years in existence and this year it's September we are having the 25th year show. So what we want to do is exhibit some of the best, best uh, products of Sri Lanka because we have 72 varieties coming from Sri Lanka. And then we also had the SME sector in mind because we are co this show is co-sponsored by the National Gem and Jewelry Authority and also we have the sponsorship given by the Export Development Board. So we have working with these two na national organizations who are the who are the governmental sector and we are the private sector. So what we have wanted to do is to give a boost to the industry because we have earmarked 2015 end to reach a target of 1 million, billion US dollars in exports. So we have seen that as the foresight for the country and we are hoping that uh, this conference by itself will boom the exports levels from May, from June this month for the next uh, six months. So that's one of the main reasons. The other reason also is we wanted to do is, is, is as of today, we have been now informed by ICA International that this is the one of the best ever attended conferences ever since they had established. So these six, or we have already touched 300 mark. I have stopped taking registrations. I can't accommodate because of the other 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 issues that I'll have if I take more, more than this, right? So we have stopped registration all yesterday. I can't take. There are few that came in, but I'm sorry to tell them, late registration cannot be accepted. So warehouse full today. From the very day one. So I just stopped yesterday, okay. but uh, yesterday I stopped registration and we are not taking anymore. So they are very delighted, they are very happy that this is the ever best, one of the best ever co attended conferences. We have put a lot of work to it and uh, the opening ceremony was awesome, it was marvelous. Everyone appreciated it. It was something out of the blues. None of the guests were expected that kind of an open ceremony Sri Lanka could ever give. Sri Lanka has all the talents in every sphere. So we produced it with Sri Lanka and more. That's why we say Sri Lanka and more. So it's only suffice and more. So far, plus the, like we have the tourism, we have the beaches, we have the culture, we have our road networks, we have our business networks, we have the government policies helping us with all our facilities, encouraging us for exports. They are giving a lot of facilities to us. So every government that was in power had always seen that that is the focus. So we fo took all those points into consideration and we focused to say so far and more to give the best to the delegations who are attending this conference. Passing through the gemstones that were available here at uh, Facets 2015 when I came across uh, Olga from Russia who is browsing through as well. Hi Olga, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, now I saw you looking at some of the stones, talking to some of the, the dealers. What exactly are you doing here at this exhibition? Well, actually, I'm doing two things that are both connected to the gem industry. I'm here to represent uh, one of the major jewelry magazines from Russia mm -hmm. and 
I'm going to write about the event okay. and uh, I also here as a gem dealer so I'm here to meet with some of my colleagues and suppliers and uh, to see the, the market, yes. All right, so two, two birds with one stone. Um, that being said, how, how is the market here in Sri Lanka from your perspective? Is it your first time here? No, it's not. Okay, so you've been here a while and you, and you know the market, all right. Um, what would you say are your most common interests, you personally, if you were to buy maybe a stone from here, would, what would you go for? Well, uh, Ceylon Sapphire is a very strong brand and uh, has a very high demand. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are looking forward to getting more of uh, Ceylon Sapphires. You know, it's uh, the, the major point for me. There are other wonderful stones as well that are very interesting, and, uh, but this one is the major. How long are you here for? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, not sure yet. So you might stick around, might not. Have you been able to look at the country in general or maybe go and see how these gemstones are mined? Have you had that experience or yes. no? Yes. Yeah, so, um, in my previous trips, uh, I visited Ratnapura and Birala markets and I went to the mines with some of my again, colleagues and some of their suppliers. But um, I am really looking forward to do it again. All right, thank you so much for talking to us. I won't keep you out for long. Thank you. So I walked my way here to Park Street Mews and guess who's here? Wasam Ismail. Hi, Wasam. I missed you. So colors of Sri Lanka, eh? Colors of Sri Lanka, that's right. We're here at Colors of Sri Lanka, which is basically a follow-up to Aika, uh, which was happening in the afternoon today. And boy is it getting really funky and I also heard that early on during the day you were going around exploring some gems yeah I was what's your okay which month were you born January and do you know what the birthstone for that month is no no I don't okay, actually, do you know yeah I do because I googled it and it says garnet <laughs> what does that mean what does that even mean um, if I remember correctly it's something to do with uh, Friendship, honesty, and trust. Oh, that means you can trust me with all your secrets. <laughs> what, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. Your, what's yours? What's yours? Um, uh, well, my birth month's December. Okay. Um, the stone, I think, is turquoise. Okay. Don't ask me what it signifies because I don't know. You have no, idea. I have no idea. Let's find out through the show. All right, so basically, um, all of the delegates who were there at the ICA conference are now here to relax and unwind. And we're going to make sure that they enjoy a piece of Sri Lanka here at Park Street Muse. And I think it's not just the following delegates here. I think Sasha and I are going to go around and also try and see if we can explore some of the culture, some of the culture that we miss. Definitely. So join us on Out and About as we enjoy this experience with them. <laughs> I've got Becky and Kevin here who are wholesale gym enthusiasts. Hi Becky. Hi there. So uh, how long have you been in the country? We've only been in the country for about four days. Four days and how has the experience been so far? It's been wonderful. Sri Lanka is beautiful and the people are friendly. So now I take it that um, you've got some food uh, right here and this is the first time that you're going to experience uh, Sri Lankan potato curry with rice as well as uh, I see uh, coconut sambal there and uh, coconut roti so we're gonna get you to sample it on camera and we're gonna get your views on what it tastes like yeah hey tell me when you're ready yeah we're ready we're ready when you are go for it what's the first thing that comes to your head sweet and savory sweet and savory and you Kevin smooth smooth have you tasted anything like this before no, it's a wonderful combination of flavors. And how has the food been so far since Saturday? It's been excellent. So we've basically taken the jobs of waitresses and waiters here. We're giving Isawade to all of the delegates who are here. Hi, you beautiful ladies are from Thailand. Can I get your names? Yes, my name is Peng. And you are? My name is Nop. Okay, and you never had this before, right? Never. No, never. this is basically street food. It has prawns in it. 
and this is basically you get these by the side of the beach here in Sri Lanka okay so I want you ladies to try this okay. tell me what you feel about it okay okay you first? Try first okay uh, how, how do I take it take take the whole thing by your hand and uh, just bite into bite it. it bite okay, it bite it it's going to be spicy uh, no no <laughs> Nice, it's nice. Not too spicy. Not spicy. Yeah, and crispy, crispy. Yes. yes. Okay. Not too spicy. I will try. But now, now I'm getting spicy. Oh, now you're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, if you could have you try. Okay, sure. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's very greasy, also. Yeah, and have a smell of trim now. Oh, okay. mm. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> I love it. A lot. I mean, it's good. Yeah. Tasty, okay. but a little oily. A little too oily. Yeah, cause it's deep fried. It's deep fried. So okay. Now, uh, you guys are wearing sarongs or lungis. How do you feel about it? It's my first time okay. to be in salon. Um, first time, you know, it's I cannot try it. Yeah. Like, I have someone help you? Yeah, someone have to help me. And finally, I can do it. Yeah. Yes. It's basically like a skirt. What do you think about the colors here? The color here is bright and I think it's fit with all everyone when we when we wear it. We feel relaxed. Yeah. Mm, yes. Right. Thank you so much for talking to us. Have fun. Hi Clement. Hello. So you've been here from Saturday as well? That's correct, yeah. And uh, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you three things you like about Sri Lanka so far. Okay. I love the culture. It's a very strong and uh, present culture. I love the colors of Sri Lanka and I love the, the, the landscape here. I see. Is this your first visit here? Actually, it's my second visit. I was here in March. And uh, it's my second visit right now. All right, and uh, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. And this another thing similar is the parade here. It's pretty much like carnival in Brazil. You see like the carnival. <laughs> that is the carnival. Very happy, but we don't have elephants there, though. We don't have elephants, but nevertheless, I think both parades are pretty cheerful, right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, um, well, uh, I'm going to ask you now. You're wearing a sarong. Is this the first time you got into a sarong? That's the first time in a sarong. Yeah, in a skirt like that. Uh, did anybody help you to get into it or did you manage it yourself? Actually, I managed myself. How did you know how to wear it? That was the, the instructions they gave me there and I, I made it happen. And you did it all by yourself? All by myself, that's right. Without the aid of YouTube? <laughs> Without the aid of YouTube, that's all right. right. High five to that. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here with me right now is beautiful Sarah and Bobby from Australia. Hi girls, how are you guys doing? Great. Great. And I see you have a, a cute little doggy here. What's what's this about? This is Victoria. Victoria comes from the Gemology Association of Australia. Has travelled with us okay. for this great conference. So it's travelled across the continents and oceans to get to Sri Lanka, yeah? That's correct. That's and it, correct. it is your birthday as well. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. How does it feel to be in Sri Lanka on your birthday? How has the experience been for you? Well, to tell you the truth, it's my third birthday in Sri Lanka. <laughs> My first birthday was 2005, last year and this year, okay. and I love it. Brilliant, uh, and you've been coming to Sri Lanka very often, and is this in association with Gemstones, is yeah. that what's happening? The first time I came was 2005 for a conference for the Gemology Association, and then I just loved the country, so I kept coming back, and the people, yeah. What about you? Uh, this is my first time in Sri Lanka, okay. but I've been here for two weeks and we've been travelling around. It's fantastic. How is the culture for you and how is the food? How has the experience been? We've been loving it. The culture, the food, people, everything. Absolutely fantastic. I love what you've done with the, the sarongs that you've been given. Very modern, very beautiful. Um, what do you think about the whole experience that Ica has provided you with? You're, they're taking you on tours to see the mining process and the whole shebang. How do you feel about it? Oh, it's fantastic. We're really looking forward to the mining tour. And you? Oh, I think the quality of the talks have been absolutely amazing. Um, we've just had such a good time and I'm looking forward to... I've done the mine tour in 2005, but I'm looking forward to see the changes. And how much longer can we expect you to be here? Well, after the mine tour, we have another week holiday before we head off to Thailand. 
but we'll be back again in no time because we love it so much. Brilliant, and we hope to see you soon as well. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. I bumped into Asanka Sahabandhu once again. Asanka, it's, I think it's becoming a habit that I bump into you in events like this. Yeah, well, what can I say? I mean, we, we mingle with the best, they say. I see. And in case you don't know, Asanka is also a very prominent radio personality for SFM. I know you had a show a little while ago. You, you're here just after that, right? Yeah, straight from the show. Uh, as they say, the show must go on. Every show must go on at this point. And the best, the other thing about Asanka is the fact that every time I see him in, in some of these events, he comes up with some really creative attires. <laughs> Tell me, how did you come up with a bow like that? Uh, well, uh, I mean, they said that it's a very colourful event and uh, you gotta prep up yourself. Uh, you gotta be dressed to impress, so to speak. So, I kind of like dressing up uh, and also especially in this entertainment business, uh, how people perceive you on stage, how people see you also plays a big role in how far and how long you go. And in most of these events, I mean, uh, a lot of the audiences are locals and, and, and an event like this, there's so much of foreigners trying to connect with Sri Lankan culture and in your own uh, creative sense, you try to get out there on stage and you try to portray your localized creative skills on stage. What, 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 is, what was it like connecting with the foreign audience? Uh, for one, it's quite easy to connect with the audience musically because music is universal. Uh, and if you pick the right couple of songs, if you pick the right entertainment act for this audience, who is a very, uh, you know, they're a very fun-loving audience by the look of it. And uh, they really enjoyed the performances. Selecting the right song is of course up to the event managers and the people who put the event together. So, credit to them. And in terms of responsiveness between foreign and local audiences, do you have any comments on that? Um, I would not belittle our Sri Lankan audience, but uh, whenever Imagine if you go to a country like Malaysia or, or, or even to Dubai for a concert. If you see Bruno Mars or someone playing, you'd be really happy because you're there for the experience. So I guess when it comes to a foreigner who comes to Sri Lanka to uh, you know, check out the entire island, this beautiful paradise nation, they come and they see us perform and they're like, wow, you know, these guys got talent. Uh, music is universal. It's very easy to connect. Response-wise, I would say a foreign audience is always cool because, you know, uh, they're very open. They're very open-minded, they're not shy and they're very receptive. And I think if they like it, they'll just tell you they like it and if they don't, they'll just tell you they don't, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's the that's a hard and fast rule of entertainment. The moment you're not good, you would know, you would look at them while you're singing and they'll be like, What is she singing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and any more acts coming up tonight? Uh, yeah, a couple of more acts coming up. I'm doing a medley of uh, um, uh, Chris Brown and uh, LMFAO. That's coming up in a little bit. All right, so you're adding a little bit of local spice into that? Ah, uh, not really. I think I've, I've finished my local segment now. I'm, I'm going to my international segment, hopefully. All right, well, all the best to you. <laughs> Thank you, Mazar. Thank you. Now is Mr. Kasrif. Did I say that right? From Israel. I spotted him from far away because he's wearing, wearing a very colorful outfit. How are you today? Fine, very well. Thank you. How has the experience been here in Sri Lanka? Well, this is not my first visit to Sri Lanka. So, as a matter of fact, I come to a known place and I love it. I love every moment. I was here in the 90s, early 90s. Oh, so this is the first time since you've been in the uh, been here in the 90s. Yes, I have been then about seven, ten times. Okay. And then it was a big period of not coming to Sri Lanka, and I missed the place. So how has the progress been? You've come here in the 90s, and then you stopped coming, and then you came after a long time. My dear lady, <laughs> in the 90s nobody thought about you even. True. And at that time, is it true? And that time, it was very bad times for Sri Lanka. It was the, the, the war, and yeah. don't, I don't want to mention, but yeah. it, that time, it was a wonderful place, and a wonderful experience, and I always wanted to come back here. And now I came to the Congress, because yeah. it's 
the opportunity to come and to visit the island that I really, really cherished. And what would what would you say your background is with gemstones and the ICA? Um, gemstones and ICA, ICA and everything is a very important thing for Sri Lanka, for me as a poet, for you as a woman. You know that when we write a poem, we have letters, and the letter combine into words. The words combine into sentences, and then we have a paragraph. If the paragraph is something not very interesting, it's a tax form. Yeah. If it's very nice, it's yeah. very interesting, it's a poem. Yeah. And we are looking for the poetry in gemstones. Okay. That's the, the, so I don't look for everyday gem. I don't look for everyday something shiny. Something yeah. shiny is very easy to get. But if you're speaking about a real gem, a real sapphire coming from Sri Lanka, a real ruby, a real garnet, it's different. And you have a friend. Hi, how are you? Fine. And your name is? I'm Muzir Munas. Hi, and how has the experience been for you? Awesome. With my international friends like him, <laughs> who, who's going to be a great guide for me in my business career. Aww. How's that? Well, it's You've made friends. Um, one of the main purposes of being here is to, excuse me for the expression, for the pompous expression, to educate the young generation for having connection with out, the, the out of the world, the surrounding place. I always find somebody young and try to make the connection and then I step away and they are doing the business because otherwise there is no future for the business. You can't tell by the way I use my walk I'm a woman's man, no time to talk And you see love, we'll live for the thing Can't you rap, this is how I'm gone Never turn around, I know So the Aika Congress Colors of Sri Lanka is coming to the end this particular segment um, but I think we had quite a bit of fun exploring the Sri Lankan culture ourselves, right Sasha? We did. Turns out we hadn't explored Sri Lanka's culture as much as we thought we did. And yet today we got the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I think you and I had Saravita for the first time. <laughs> yeah, we did. It didn't end up as pleasantly as we thought it would at the end. On yeah, camera uh, was pretty good. Yeah, when the camera was focused, when the camera was focused on Sasha, I mean, she was fine, she was enjoying it, it was sweet, it was nice, but as the camera went off, she kind of found it too strong, and boy, you should have seen her reactions then. Let's not, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, let, let, let's not go there. So basically, uh, we saw that most of the delegates had so much fun, yeah. and it's brilliant to see how foreigners actually see Sri Lankan culture yeah. as opposed to their own. And I think we as Sri Lankans too, we need to kind of understand the fact that we live in a beautiful country and there's so much of things that we, even we as Sri Lankans can continue to keep exploring because there's so much beautiful things we can do out here. And by saying that, this program's coming to an end, end and do join us next time at the same time, 7.30 on Thursdays. Exactly. And you can find us on all social media networks on hashtag Team Out and About and mainly on, uh, on Facebook. Yeah, that's www.facebook.com slash out and about MTV Sports. Sports. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>